right, sounds like we got a pretty interesting rig today. It's a Grand Design 2023 model reflection. We're doing two inverters in it. Can you go through what we're gonna do? Yeah, so we are gonna be doing two of the new MultiPlus 2, uh, two X120 models. So they're actually 240 volt compatible. Uh, this is a 50 amp coach, so we're gonna be putting in two of them to get uh, upwards of 3000 VA power. What's going on the roof? Um, just about the biggest solar system you can install in one of these. We're putting um, a bunch of the rich 200 watt solar panels up there. And the, we're do 12 or 14, depending on what fits up there. In the 24 volt configuration, it sounds like, huh? Yeah, they're, I think they're 36 volts um, VMPP or something like that, but it'll be perfect for our panels. Um, I think we're going to series them to get the voltage up and a little more efficient wire route down. Gotcha. I think this customer will be uh, pretty stoked on the rig. He's already pretty stoked. I think this is going to be a fun one. We're looking forward to it. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Got the install coming along here pretty nicely. Um, being that this is one of very few dual inverter systems we've done, um, and the first multi plus two dual inverter system, we're uh, adopting some new hardware. Um, since we have to run 6 4 wire into both inverters, we're actually going to use these Wago connectors. So each one of these has three terminals, these are six gauge push in terminals, and so we've got these two boxes that are going to serve as the AC input splitter and the AC output combiner. Um, and essentially we're gonna just pop these in the boxes here and connect the wires. It should be a lot easier and cleaner than using you know, clock splices or any other form, you know, traditional method. And what's different about these uh, these blocks than the ones that would come normally with the big baby box? Well, um, the, the normal blocks, well, you can use a lot of different DIN rail mounts in these, but the fact that they're DIN rail mount means that it doesn't move around. So. Typically, we would use block splices, which are going to be floating, and you have to put heat shrink over them because they're not mounted to anything. Um, but the um, these boxes can often use breakers, which just have two terminals, or we use um, I forget what they're called by now. <laughs> um, we'll often use the um, block splices uh, or terminal. What, are they, what, the, what the heck are the Legos? Are the ones that are just we usually like use. Are they called? Oh, DIN mount break? DIN uh, mount. DIN mount. Uh, I know, I was struggling that too. I'm like, the uh, blocks. DIN mount. DIN mount blocks. Yeah, block. I mean, DIN mount. Um, terminal block. Is that going to work? Oh, dude, it's going to work. Beautiful. We're going to be doing this a lot more often. <laughs> with the AC mostly run, what's next on the system? Yeah, so um, now that we've got all this done on the junction boxes and uh, everything seems to be mostly done on the other side as well, we're gonna be getting the DC system set up here, um, our battery connections off the Lynx distributor, and uh, that's gonna be going in here. We're also gonna keep working on the solar on the roof and things should be coming along nicely. All right, we've got all the panels stuck down. What kind of system are they getting? Yeah, so um, 
This is one of the larger solar systems we've installed. This is using the Rich 200 watt solar panels. We've got 14 of them uh, in series parallel. So uh, the 24 volt nominal panels, we're connecting in pairs to increase the voltage of the panels or the, the power coming down, which uh, is going to be powering a 150, 100 MPPT big time solar charger. And um, with the 24 volt system, you can get quite a bit more power, double the power from what you could on a 12 volt system, for example. Um, so I'll show you how we're connecting these down here. Um, underneath the panels, we got our roof wire, which is coming from our combiner box. And then we have uh, connections over here to this other panel that we've extended out. And then uh, this is a series connection between these two panels. And then you can see um, these panels are, these cables are connected in. So this is a uh, series parallel in pairs. And then over here we have the C-Box. You can see that we've actually connected only six, or excuse me, um, seven cables into this box. And that pretty well maxes it out. You can fit 10 glands, but as you can see with 14 panels in series parallel, it's a lot easier to run fewer wires and you increase the voltage, thus increasing the efficiency by reducing the resistance. So this is gonna be a pretty slick system. All right, so we're in the uh, QC process on the final day. Why are some of the connections back out that we had had in before? Yeah, so um, we're in the programming process and since we have a dual inverter system that's in parallel, um, we have to individually update the firmware for each inverter and then program them as a pair. And when we do that, we wanna make sure that the inverter's output is isolated because we do not want them to short out. And as soon as they start talking to each other, they're always gonna look for each other before they activate. So. Yeah, they're safe to bond after you've got them turned on. There may be another way to do this, but I wanted to make sure that we tested this, check the voltage on everything, and that it was working as it should be before we go ahead and get things um, powered on. So we've pulled the line one and two out from one of the inverter outputs. Um, we've hooked up the uh, computer MK3 adapter. We disconnected the servo and uh, BMS so that we can uh, basically program these separately. Um, and then we went ahead and got them set up as a pair. Um, using a VE configurator and everything's looking good. So we're going to get things reconnected. Um, once we have the BMS reconnected, everything will be powered on and working as it should. Anything else to know specialty wise for a dual inverter system as far as safety or concerns when you are programming? Well, um, yeah, I'd say this is the most important thing is make sure these are isolated. Uh, dual inverters in split phase, you need to make sure that you've got the right settings. Uh, you don't want, you want to have the switch as group unchecked or in, uh, inverters used on RVs, but in parallel, it's a lot simpler. You just set them up in single phase, um, although these are able to accept 240 dual phase because they are the two X120 models, they actually um, are set up for 120 volt. Great. So, yeah. system is done, QC is done. What is going on with this system? Why are your people gonna be jealous of it? <laughs> well, um, first off, we got dual inverters capable of 6,000 VA or uh, 4,800 watts of power output. 6,000 VA or uh, 4,800 watts of power output. And, uh, 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! We went uh, 24 volts basically to keep efficiency down, or uh, efficiency up and resistance down. So we've got smaller gauge, smaller gauge cables coming through here. Um, we're able to use, you know, basically larger um, inverters with smaller wires because we're increasing the voltage. So that's going to keep the system from overheating or having any resistance issues causing problems. Which, uh, if you have a system this big on 12 volts, you're likely to have. So in a system like this, what kind of BMS system are you using, and what are the advantages of going the route that we did? Yeah, so um, we're using the Victron Lynx Smart BMS on this one. Um, it's a battery monitor shunt um, and BMS all built into one. So essentially that's going to supply battery monitoring information, um, current values, and beyond that it actually is um, directly tied to the servo and communicates to all the other components in the system to allow charging and discharging to be controlled. So 
it's a pretty nice feature. It also has a pre-charge feature, which is nice because it takes that arcing off the switches um, and basically allows the DMS directly to power up the inverters on startup. So uh, nice system upgrade. What kind of things are they going to be able to do with this system that, say, somebody running a 12-volt system would not be able to do? Well, um, based on the inverter size, they're going to be able to run two air conditioners or they're going to be able to run, you know, Actually, they could probably run two air conditioners and a microwave, for example. They're going to have a lot of flexibility in what they can do. So you can, with, within limit, you can uh, live without limit. <laughs>